Hello guys, welcome back to my channel DP Design and in this video we are going to learn how to perform a heat stress simulation on the brick caliper. So let's get started. Uh, as you can see we have the geometry which is the assembly of our brick pads and the caliper. So we want to perform the heat stress pattern we are getting after applying the temperature on the brick pads and see if the yield point is getting crossed or not the material is withstanding the heat withstanding with the uh, existing heat or not so that kind of uh, simulation we are going to perform in this uh, video so stay tuned till the end for the watching the whole tutorial video on the heat stress simulation so let's get started with the uh, first step which is uh, we will go to new study and we don't want to go to the thermal analysis for now just because we want to check the stress due to the temperature so we can select the static simulation and if you have any study features before from the thermal or any any of the uh, any of type of simulation so you can import the study features as well also you can simplify the 2d simplification simplification if you have the only one part right a symmetrical part you have so you can use that so we we will go we will go with the both uh, parameters unchecked okay now we want to only perform in this uh, brick pad area we don't want this caliper and right so what you can do you can just uh, we have two pads over here so I will exclude this okay I will exclude this from the analysis so that caliper cannot take part in the simulation I threw him out so yeah this is our hidden or you can say excluded from the simulation so it will not take part and we have to assign the material first whatever material you can assign for now so maybe I will select the cast carbon steel for now also for this cast carbon steel yeah this way. okay I will apply this now as you can see we have applied the material next part is the uh, geometry boundary condition okay now it is in the global uh, interaction we don't have to go deeply into the connection just because of this is not an a uh, typical assembly right so what i can do i can hide one pad also so i can do only on the one pair so it will uh, simplify my simulation and reduce my computational time so that's why i will not assign any type of connection over here or any type of global interaction here i will just apply a simple boundary condition as this is my fixed or this is mount has been fixed so whatever you want to apply whatever part you want to fix you can select the face or you can select the edge or vertex and then you can click the apply so it will have the fixture over here right so yeah, as you can see this my part has been fixed right now as a fixed geometry now in uh, in the stress values you want to get due to the temperature so what you can do you can apply the loads and go to the temperature now you want to set it to the celsius and how many celsius let's say i will take uh, around 350 degrees celsius for now and i will select this phase as my heat generation point so this is the point where my temperature is around 350 degrees celsius and also you can uh, edit your symbol as setting this is the symbol for the up applying the temperature so also you can edit this you it is heat so i will click okay yeah it's read now now i am feeling the temperature is going to apply it. right so you can hide this also you can show the preview as well okay now you are uh, done with the boundary condition and now i will mesh 
so in the meshing i will apply the mesh control over this faces so i will from how i will do it fine we'll do it mm and one mm of this i will just do this edges One point three. Let the mesh control and my overall mesh will be mesh parameters. Okay, we do now make it to two. Okay, I will. Oh yeah. Now my meshing has been done. So as you can see, my mesh is still core. What I will do? I will edit the definition and I will make it a point five and then I will create the mesh okay it's still okay for this study it's okay okay mesh now what I will do I will run the study oh as you can see there are so much bubbles over here so to reduce this bubble what i will do i will just double click on it and go to the definition go to the true scale as you can see 474 times displacement is showing so you have to go true scale or whatever you have to uh, user defined value you can give let's say if i do thousand then it will blast just like that so I will go to the true scale so that you can see the stress pattern, whatever is, it is happening. Yeah. Now we will go to the on displacement plot. Uh, for the displacement plot, we will we'll same do the true scale. Okay. Yeah. So it is said that uh, the sharp corners are the uh, what you can say stress riser. So as you can see here also you have you can give your radius to this uh, edges so that the heat distribution will be good at, at that portion so as you can see there are there are some regions over there and if you want to see deeply where the temp where the heat stress is uh, located or where it is highly uh, compiling the area area so what you can do you can just click on the iso clipping and go to the stress pattern okay i will go to the loop so as you can see 1 into 10 to 9 that much of stress is generating due to the this temperature this is my one my c stresses and my yield strength is around 2.4 into 10 to 8 so yes it is crossing the limit so might be this temperature can my damage my bracket so as you can see you will drag this mouse and these are some high stress riser area over here so these are my failure locations as you can see these are my failure location yeah this is my stress pattern so just like that you can uh, see your stress pattern how it is happening And if I see my yield point location, okay, this region is about to fail due to the temperature. So what you can do, you can improve the design. You can put some good design idea on the brake pair to reduce the stress pattern or reduce the stress for stress. So this is how you can interpret the result. So this is the basic study how heat stress can be calculated uh, using the SOLIDWORKS simulation. So in the future we will come with come with the heat transfer analysis with uh, when you uh, also we can come up with the CFD analysis as well. So whatever you are doing in the CFD we can transport all the output data into the input of the FEA. So in the output of the FEA, we can know how much uh, deformation, how much stress is actually going to happen due to the 
uh, convection and uh, conduction. So this is all for this video. Uh, stay tuned and keep sharing, keep learning. Thank you so much for your support.